Mother's Day is one of those days that for some it's happy and glorious, and for others it's a sad day. It was, it was always a kind of a happy day for us and, until we, uh, so we, start, we started having miscarriages. And after a while, you know, sitting there on, on Mother's Day, wondering if, if Bridge was ever going to get to enjoy one. And, uh, and, it's, uh, and now we're, we're good. Yeah, we're good. It's back to being a good day. But it's, it's sometimes it's a sad day, and while not all of us are mothers, and uh, one thing that's true of all of you is you, you, all, you all have or have had a mother, right? You've, I, can, I can tell just by looking at you that somewhere out there is, a, is somebody that you either call or used to call mom. And Moms can do powerful things, can't they? I mean, a big, burly football player scores a touchdown, and what does he say? Hi, Mom. Moms are powerful. But moms can do powerfully good things. And unfortunately, moms can do powerfully bad things, can they not? We don't want to. We don't want to do the bad things, but but they can. And, and and we meet some people all over the spectrum in Scripture. And in Genesis 24, we meet a lady named Rebecca, who 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 became a mother. And she came out. The, she came before that. She came out to draw water, just as Isaac's servants were praying for a wife. This is one of those Bible coincidences. They're praying for a wife, and all of a sudden, out comes this uh, relatively good-looking lady. They see she's beautiful. She's never been with a man. That's exactly what they're looking for. Can you imagine that? It's good that we don't do that nowadays, right? Hey, guys, go out and find me a wife. Bring her back. And we do our own hunting now, don't we? I don't, that may have sounded wrong, but you know what I mean. And so if I trusted my buddies to go out and find me a wife, I don't know. You've got to find a good batch of buddies for you're going to want to do that. But that's what Isaac did. They, they, made, her, they made her acquaintance. They, find, they got her fan. They went back to her family. And they, they brought Rebecca back. Rebecca married Isaac. And, and she was there for Isaac. The Bible tells us that when Isaac's mother passed away, Rebecca comforted him. And, and, and uh, they went on to have two kids. And in verse 20, chapter 25 of Genesis verse 28, it says, Isaac loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Now, we really don't know what much more about Rebecca, but by the time we get to Genesis chapter 27, we see she overhears a conversation between Isaac and Esau. Isaac wants some food so he can bless Esau. Esau is the oldest. So he sends Esau to get some food. And, and verse 5 tells us Rebecca was listening. She overheard. And when Esau left, she grabs Jacob and says, Hey, go bring some goats and I'll make you some food to take your father. So he blesses you instead. And if Jacob doesn't seem to mind the idea. Notice he doesn't say, No, Mom. That would be dishonest. All he really says is, and that probably won't work. He's a hairy dude. I'm not a hairy guy. He's going to be able to tell. He won't be fooled. Rebecca says, no, no, no. Let the curse fall on me, she says. She's so bent on having Jacob get the blessing and not Esau. Just do what I say, son. Now Jacob listens to his mother, tricks his father, receives Esau's blessing, and Esau's pretty upset about this later on. Jacob got the blessing. He's so afraid of his brother, he fled. Now more often than not, I'd say 99% of the times when I'm seeing little kids and their moms are telling them something, I'm saying, hey, now listen to your mom. Listen to your mom. But in this case, Jacob's mom was up to no good. She was looking to deceive her husband. Now, now uh, a mom who's following Jesus would never show favoritism among the children. Have you ever seen that? A mom or even a dad or anybody showing favoritism, one child versus another. That is not a good thing. That doesn't make for a happy home. That makes for dissension and all kinds of other things. Don't tell your father. Moms, you ever told your kids something? Now don't tell your father. It's one thing if you're trying to surprise him with his favorite meal. <laughs> it's another thing if you're trying to deceive him. They deceived the, uh, Isaac in this case. And I'm not sure what she had against Esau. They were twins. But she clearly favors Jacob. And she deliberately enticed him to deceive her father and see his blessing. Now let me tell you, mothers, that's influence. That's negative influence, but that's influence. That's the powers. That's the power that mothers have. You know, they can tell their son something, and I realize, okay, we don't always listen to our moms, do we, guys? You get to a certain point, and we stop, I don't know. It's been a while since I've listened to my mom. Bridget should be, she should be sitting right up here so you can see all her facial expressions. You'd have to know. You know there's more. It would take me too long to tell you. But have you ever been told, and, uh, and I've experienced that a little bit, now don't, now don't tell your dad. That's deceptive. That's not what Jesus would do. Another mom I want to introduce us to this morning that, uh, who, uh, who read about this one? 
Kevin read the second one, is the mother of Zebedee's sons. We don't even know her name. It's Zebedee's, the sons of Zebedee, it's their mom. We don't know her name, but she's a woman of influence. She comes to Jesus and she asks a favor. Jesus, let one of my kids sit on your right and one on your left in the kingdom of God. Now this mother doesn't have the same issues that Rebecca does. She's not looking to deceive anybody. She clearly wants to bless both of her sons. And she wants something special for each of them. Unfortunately, this woman has some pride issues. She wants her son to be in the two best seats in the, in the kingdom. Who cares about everybody else's sons? Who cares about Jesus? Jesus got in her face and said, Hey, look, God knows who He wants there. You know, if you're chosen to be a special, in a special place in the kingdom of God, then we answer the call. Don't we? We answer the bell. But to be presumptuous as to ask Jesus to sit in that place. Hey, God, hey, one of those 12 thrones that the Bible talks about, can I be in one of them? Really? Oh, who wouldn't love to be in one of those thrones? But to volunteer for that position? Whew. Everyone wants their kids in the spotlight. This woman wanted her kids in the spotlight. I've seen this from sports to music to productions, you name it. You'll see parents who think that, I mean, all parents think their kids are the greatest. But let me tell you something. If, 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 uh, if one of my kids is a mediocre something or other, the last place I want them is front and center in front of everybody so you can all see how mediocre they are. Right? And I've seen kids end up in places they had no business being because dad or mommy had influence. Zebedee's wife, the sons of Zebedee's mother, wanted her sons in a prime place. It's not our place to jockey for those kind of positions. Oh, we see moms have powerful influence, don't they? Don't they? You know, um, we want what we've earned. And if Jesus, you know, uh, in his, in his, or if the Father in His infinite wisdom decides that someday one of us gets to be on His right and one of us gets to be on His left, then hallelujah. But to be presumptuous enough to say, Jesus, Jesus, can, can, I want my kids in the prime spot. No, that's not what it's about. These places belong to those for whom they've been prepared by my Father. You notice the other, two, the other disciples got upset that these guys would do that. That causes dissension. When, why do you see dissension? When somebody wants something that isn't rightfully theirs, what do you have? Dissension. Anytime somebody tries to put themselves in a place they're not suited for. And in God's kingdom, God doesn't ask us where we want to serve, does He? He doesn't say, who wants to be this? Or who wants to be that? He, say, he calls us and He says, I want you to do this. And we answer the call. No way. He tells us where to go. Now maybe you're not a Rebecca-style mom favoring one over the other and deceiving your husband, but how are we doing with regards to the sons of Zebedee-style mom? Now I know you all want what's best for your kids. But what's best for your kids and... And then there's, there's, there's another line you cross later and it's like, I want my kid to be the captain of the whatever team or the, I'm not, or, or the first chair. Is that what it's called? In the orchestra. Is that what it's called? If you have to forgive me, my, my range of metaphors is limited. to. Uh... But finally, after we see these other two moms, we, we get to a woman named Hannah who's married to a guy named Elkanah. And for the longest time, they didn't have any children. And, 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 and you, you, you all know people in those situations who you think, well, they made great parents. Why don't they have any hey, kids? But finally, they had a little boy. They called him Samuel. And Hannah says to her husband, hey, after the boy's wean, I'll be along and we'll take him. We'll present him to the Lord. He's going to be there always. And O'Connor told her, hey, that's fine, but make sure you get him weaned first. You know, before we go sending our kid off to live with the high priest in the temple, let's just make sure that you, know, you don't want the high priest trying to wean your kid, do you? You know? <laughs> I, I wouldn't know how to do that. And so, uh, Bridget did all the legwork when it came to that kind of stuff, right, hon? All right, so uh, I know my place. But I can't say that's fine. So Hannah went and weaned Samuel. And in verse 27, she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh and said, Hey, I prayed for this child. I prayed a long time for this child because we didn't have kids for a long time. The Lord finally granted what I asked of him. And so now I'm giving him to the Lord. For his whole life he'll be given over to the Lord. His mother surrendered her son with her husband's blessing and Samuel went on to be a great man of God. I mean, we can finish the story of Jacob and Esau. We can finish the story of the sons of Zebedee. But Samuel, whose mom didn't seek to deceive anybody, whose mom didn't seek to get her son in the best spot, 
God took Samuel, and Samuel was one of the greatest people in the history of Israel. God made him a great man. God can do that. His mother put him in a position to be used by God, and God used him. Moms, ladies, everybody, you have influence. You have more influence in people's lives than you may even know. We've got to use that influence to put our kids in position to be used by God. And if that position ends up being right here, on the right hand of the at the right hand in the kingdom, hallelujah. But it won't be, look at my son. It'll be glory to Jesus. Right? You know, keep in mind that actions speak louder than words. So how are we teaching our children? How are we teaching our children? Well, are we Rebecca? Are we are we the sons of Zebedee's mom? Or are we like Hannah, who would say, I'm gonna bring my kid to church and let God use them? We can't teach our children to be deceptive or show favoritism. That's how the world does things. You see you I'm sure you see that. I'm sure when I say that you're thinking of people, right? Who show favoritism, who use deception, who 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 want the limelight. We need to teach our kids to live in full surrender to God. And He will use them in powerful ways. If you remember the story of Abraham, who used to be Abram, God said, I will make your name great. See, we get caught up in wanting to make a name for ourselves, don't we? We need to make a name for ourselves. God will make your name great. He can make He can make our children more than we can by using all these other things. You say we meet some awesome people in Scripture. We also meet some questionable characters in Scripture, don't we? Times haven't changed all that much, have we? The only thing that changes is the names and the faces. I'm sure we can go around the room, we can all talk about things that people got that we should have got because so-and-so's mom was in this position, or so-and-so's dad was in this position. Let them have it. Right? Let them have it. Let them have it. We need to train, train our children to live in full surrender to God. Right? Let's pray. Father God, help us. Lord, on this Mother's Day, and Lord, not just on Mother's Day, but any day, Lord, as, as moms, as, as, even as dads, we have influence in the lives of children. Let us teach them and, and, and train them in the way they should go. Lord, the world is full of all the wrong stuff. Let us not get caught up in it. If we've gotten caught up in a Rebecca kind of pattern, forgive us, Lord. Help us to walk in a new way. Lord, if we've, if we've fallen into the trap of the, uh, where the sons of Zebedee's mom has, where we've, we've, we've sought things that aren't, aren't, our place, forgive us, Lord. Help us to walk in a new way. Lord, let us learn from this woman, Hannah. Lord, who so desperately wanted a child, who finally got her child, Lord, but then gave him over to You. Lord, let's uh, put our children in Your hands and trust that You'll put them where You need them to suit best in Your kingdom. Lord, put us where You want us to serve best in Your kingdom. And Lord, and help us to be content with where You put us and to love You and to love others in the name of Jesus. Amen.